guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. It's uh, freezing cold out here in Indianapolis, six degrees this morning. Uh, I know you guys are in some warmer places. Uh, Satoshi, how's, how's Florida today? Oh, Florida's, Florida's treating me great. Uh, we're broadcasting live here from Fort Lauderdale. It feels great to be down here. Uh, Mr. T1000, where are you today? I am in New York City. You guys having a nice, uh, nice Friday? Is it Friday? It is so far. So far, it's, it feels like a Wednesday right now. Uh, uh, Dr. J, you, uh, where are you kicking, kicking off from this morning? Oh, nice and balmy Boston. Charles, I know you're here in Indy with me and Miss Moneypenny. Uh, Blake, where are you today? I'm sitting in Austin, Texas, where it's a little bit chilly, but looking like it's going to be a nice day. I think we had a very uh, encouraging week in the cryptocurrency markets. You know, we saw investment grade cryptocurrencies underperform uh, small caps. So we basically saw like a risk on environment, even though it was uh, just uh, slightly. So we saw the 10 largest cryptocurrencies drop by 4% for the week and the small cap 100 index rise by three and a half percent. Charles, you want to take us through the uh, performance, uh, how our traders did? You. One with a 6.05% gain, and then the rest of the traders averaged about flat. Um, we, we averaged about 0.6% loss. Uh, the investment grade team, the large cap team, um, is uh, this is through Tuesday, these numbers, is down 2% for the year, which compares favorably to the top 10 index, which is down 4% for the year. Uh, that puts the large caps team alpha over their index at 7.8% since inception. And uh, the small cap team is actually outperforming its index by quite a bit more. You've got 10.7% of alpha over your index, your MVIS 100 small cap index. Uh, but on a year to date basis, you are underperforming the investment grade with a negative 10% year to date. So I just mentioned what worked for me this week was Crowd Machine. It was kind of a gift because I think that had we run the performance numbers yesterday, I would not have been uh, looking very good. Crowd Machine's up 100% yesterday. Uh, thanks for bringing that to my attention yesterday, Satoshi. I think you sent it, or was that T1000? T1, that was yeah. you? Yeah, no, um, we both kind of chimed in a little bit with uh, some news. Um, it looks like trading will resume, which is kind of what you know we were banking on on our side of the team was that uh, we saw a solid project which hit some road bumps and uh, a good price to accumulate, you know, with the hopes that, you know, they will resume trading um, and everything is normal, at, you know, at their businesses. So um, it looks like we got that uh, bump, at least for now. And the reason uh, we understood that the reason why their communication was little to nothing was because of an ongoing uh, FBI investigation that uh, that had prohibited them from making any public statements. So Bittrex is putting Crowd Machine back in, into its uh, exchange, which is fabulous. I think you advised us to buy it on HitBTC. Um, yeah. Possibly, yeah. So that was, a, that was a great win. Thank you for that. And I know you keep in close touch with Charlie, who is associated with that project. And uh, it shouldn't go away. It, it, has a, it has a real value prop. So I'm glad that they're going to be able to salvage that blockchain. Um, so I saw some really encouraging things in the market this week, one of which I want to share with you. It was SolidX and Vanek, they pulled their application for their physically backed cryptocurrency ETF. Uh, what was so significant is we were all excited as a marketplace when that physically backed ETF was launched. Uh, and uh, when it got pulled, there was no follow on drop in the price of Bitcoin. Basically, it's bad, it was bad news that it got pulled and the market didn't go down at all. So from my Wall Street experience, when you get bad news, but the market doesn't go down, that's indicative of a market that's done going down. It's just like there's no more sellers in the market. I've been saying this for a little while, but I'll, uh, I'll open the uh, call up to anybody that wants to share uh, catalysts that they're seeing in the marketplace on any altcoins or any of the large cap coins as well. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I have uh, something to bring up. Um, a recently launched uh, T0 platform uh, is only selling and exchanging uh, tokens between accredited investors. But interestingly enough, the back end, which is basically the ledger or the reporting of all the trades that are happening, happens on Flow's blockchain, FLO. And uh, over the past few months, 
um, I guess, anticipating the T0 launch, we've seen, you know, almost a 600% gain on flow, uh, not from the all-time high, still below the all-time high. But, you know, um, in this landscape, it's nice to, you know, try to pick some winners, which are going to be, uh, you know, really a chain that's really going to be utilized, um, you know, for something good. And some of the um, winning points on flow that I like is that there was no pre-mine, there was no ICO, so it was a, a fair launch if you want to uh, conclude it that way. And uh, for T0's purpose, it's, it's a nice blockchain because all of the reporting or all of the statistics that it gives you in the ledger is not indiscernible metadata. It's all simple, plain text. So it works very good for regulators who may want to, um, you know, take a closer look at what's actually happening in trading reports, but not have to use a third party tool to analyze the data, right? Everything will be just written in uh, plain text. So flow is something that I'm keeping my eye on now. I like something that's uh, being adopted, has a real use case. What are exchanges are you buying flow on? Flow, I, I think it's on an exchange called TikTok, which I've never used, but it's also on BitterX, which I know, um, Sarsin Funds uh, has an institutional account on. So um, there, there seems to be quite good volume. I think it's picked up in the last few days. I think I saw around a quarter million yesterday on BitterX um, for Flow. So I, I think it's something to uh, definitely keep an eye on. You spoke in that, in that uh, YouTube video about a uh, recently released UN report highlighting the benefits of cryptocurrencies to the UN. And uh, they gave a specific example of carbon coin uh, being like a blockchain project that they thought had a ton of relevant relevant value in the way as countries interact with each other. Uh, he went on to kind of read in between the lines and say like, uh, you know, governments don't trust each other and putting something like carbon emissions on a blockchain uh, makes a ton of sense. Uh, we've already seen the UN use Ethereum to distribute aid to Syrian refugees. Um, so the UN uh, joins the IMF now as being big proponents of cryptocurrencies, which I think is a fabulous feather in the hat of cryptocurrencies and will continue to work towards removing some of the negative reputation that cryptocurrencies have gotten because of Silk Road, you know, years ago. So if you didn't see that link, check that out, The Modern Investor on YouTube. Yeah, John, I think that's a great point. Uh, I think we're really starting to see a shift or um, where the underlying technology in cryptocurrency is really starting to to prevail right where you know the UN isn't saying let's use Bitcoin for carbon credits but they're saying that the, the tech that you know the distributed ledger technology is very valuable to you know give access globally to something such as carbon credits where we can track everything um, independently but we all know that we're on the same page I think uh, I think we're gonna see more and more projects following this lead this year yeah, so I looked at Carbon Coin after I heard that podcast, and I was hoping to tr see if it was running on, on the fact the UN kind of called it out. It's a $500,000 market cap coin, so it's below our minimum. You know, our minimum is a 1 million market cap as a firm. Uh, and it's, it was trading was halted. So I don't know, it's kind of crazy. They chose such an obscure and small uh, blockchain to call out in their official annual report. But they did, and uh, it's not trading anywhere right now, from what I can tell. Carbon coin, but it's on my radar right now. Um, I wanted to share something that I thought was uh, kind of a little bit of a new occurrence that I hadn't seen happen before. I was just reading through some industry news about a new um, ransomware virus. Let me see if I can get what it was called here. Uh, oh, yeah, they were ransomware on Bitcoin miners themselves. No, I had, that's actually not the story that I was, I was referencing, but I'd like to hear it. This is uh, Antonova. Antonova is a new uh, like uh, encryption ransomware virus. So it gets on your computer. And what I thought was particularly interesting about Antonova is that it's asking for Dash, which is uh, kind of the way we thought this would go with these like privacy tokens that people are going to start avoiding Bitcoin because of the tracks that it leaves to the ransomware. And so this, co this uh, new virus is specifically asking for Dash to try to uh, obscure uh, the, the ransom payments, which, you know, this is the trend that we've been predicting and now it's starting to materialize. Yeah, Dash, Dash does have a private send feature, so that, that would make sense that they're, you know, asking for Dash because they can use the anonymity. I'm surprised they didn't go with Monero, though. It seems to make no sense to me. It's such a... Right, well, you know, the reason Monero, um, you know, is considered a little bit more secret, I believe, is because... Uh, Dash doesn't have the privacy feature enabled, 
um, from the get-go. So should a uh, regular consumer uh, download the Dash wallet and start making transactions, his transactions won't be private unless he, you know, ticks a couple of boxes um, that, that makes it so. So I believe there could be, uh, you'd have an easier time potentially figuring out where transactions are linked to with Dash than in a, a currency where, you know, every transaction remained private from the, from the get-go. So let's talk about T0 real quick, because it's exciting that they went, you know, that they're live and the Dinosaur Exchange is live. This is a huge sea change for the, the, the world, really, on how securities are listed. How is T0 trading? Like, what's the price of T0? It IPO to 10 bucks, right? Uh, well, it's the last traded price on the I, well, uh, to, to backtrack a little bit, they did a STO, a security token offering. So they tried to really work with the SEC to make this a, you know, a, a legit offering, uh, a little bit different than ICOs, you know, when it comes to uh, lockup periods and so they, they forth. They just try to do it. They, they really succeeded in, in doing it properly. And so now their, their platform is launched where they want to trade the future of security tokens, T0 being the first token that they'll be traded at. And today is really the first day um, that it's live. So we're seeing prices uh, as high as $10, um, as low as $8. Um, there's quite a big um, spread there because uh, the liquidity, you know, is not quite down the first day. But in the first hour, they had about a quarter million dollars of volume. And I'd say that's very impressive for you know, day one, um, out the gate. Um, yes. as far as yeah, like yesterday it launched, but like it was a very buggy, glitchy launch. You know, we're still seeing a couple of, you know, bugs and glitches, you know, we we're just talking about before the call that, you know, we can place in, um, you know, a certain, uh, like, a, a, a sniper buy order, um, that we had already gotten some sales in on it. Um, so, you know, they're still working through the kinks on it. But yesterday I think there was, you know, one trade for like $80, you know, that kind of like painted the tape around like eight bucks, like right before the close of it. And by the way, so it trades on normal trading hours. It doesn't, you know, do 24 seven like the other exchanges. Interesting. That, that's interesting. So I saw that Bancor had a bad week down 5%. Is good news for T0 and Dinosaur, bad news for, for Bancor? I mean, is, is this a pairs trade? I mean, I don't, I don't think T Zero really cares much about Bancor, to be honest. Um, you know, like they're they're setting themselves apart um, in such a big way. Uh, for for what I had talked to uh, to you guys about on the fun level was to get everything set up and get registered because it's going to be weird for the next six seven months because uh, we said in August is where. T0 will be available to unaccredited investors and third-party exchange. So it's going to be that weird time in that, that time frame, but pretty much everyone who's in knows something about it or has, you know, bought the, uh, invested in them and their, in their ICO or their STO uh, a phase of it. So I, I don't, I don't know. That, that being said, the, the last thing I want to add to it is the way that they raised their funds. First off, they immediately cashed out uh, pretty much everything that they were raising. Um, and they do have a working product that is generating some income to it. So it's probably more pegged to the dollar than any, um, than any ICO um, that's, that's actually that. come out. I'm that's sorry, say you know, Blake, you're, I know you're an expert on STOs and platforms, and we've spoken about uh, Securitize in the past. Do you see losers in, in this marketplace? Is Bancor going to lose if, if T0 wins? What are you guys saying at Nova Block on that? Uh, no, I think there's going to be multiple winners in the space. Um, I mean, it's good to see, um, you know, a larger and, and a, I mean, Bancor, uh, not necessarily, but, um, you know, well-funded player um, uh, enter the space and, and actually launch a working product. Um, you know, this is one of like the first real, um, you know, trading venues. Um, and, and that's been a, um, you know, that, that's really the bottleneck. That, that's people uh, to date have really been, you know, issue the token and then figure out exchange later. Um, and, and now you have open finance, you have T0. Um, so it, it's, you know, market penetration, it, it's kind of a land grab at this point. It is such an ocean of assets that can be tokenized and listed. Um, there's so many, um, you know, investors that um, you either want to participate in, um, you know, traditional markets and can and view this as a way um, or, you know, for, or otherwise inclined to use this technology. Um, you know, I think it's, it's really the stage where there's multiple winners. Um, I, I don't see, you know, much 
consolidation in the industry um, until there's really uh, established players. Yeah, so plenty, plenty to go around is what I'm hearing. I think you're probably right. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, I was going to mention our call yesterday with our friend Rob over at Cosmo. Uh, he has got a tokenized venture capital fund. It's going to have to go on one of these white-labeled exchanges, I imagine, to stay compliant with SEC regulations. Uh, Ms. Moneypenny, I know you were setting us up on Dinosaur. Do you want to talk about some of the KYC stuff that uh, T0 is making us go through? Lots of it. Um, just making sure you've got, you know, anti-money laundering policies in place that you do go through um, all of the steps to verify that everyone that's part of your fund as far as clients are indeed accredited because they're asking for all of that information. Um, so use third party administrators like we do, just make sure they're really good. And, and they're also looking for access people too. They want they ask questions like, you know, does anyone in your family work for a registered broker dealer? These are yep. questions to deter people from insider right. trading in your platforms. And, uh, you know, if someone in your family does work at a broker dealer, then they're going to have to send duplicate statements to that employer to make sure they didn't have material non-public information. So they're like a real exchange. And I think that we knew they were going to be like this because they have people working for them from the SEC and that used to be like the head of FINRA and all these other, you know, traditional Wall Street jo jobs. And so it's opening up this account to trade T0 is feeling like opening up a traditional brokerage account. And now you guys some of they're only open like nine to five. That's crazy too. Is it, is it uh, market hours, 930 to four? Yeah, it is, it is 930 to four. And another note, I also saw somewhere that uh, someone in the T0 form was having an issue um, being verified because he had a series seven and he had to fill out a 407. Um, so yeah, they're really, really on top of making sure that even if someone's a registered advisor, um, you know, that you know, their employee has to make sure that they're not insider trading and that this you know, doesn't violate any of that. So I really like um, to the extent that they're going to verify people um, yeah. as well as some of their partnerships. I mean, look, the Dino account is SPIC. So every individual has up to 250K insurance um, on their cash value inside of Dino. So you know, I think that's, that's, a, that that's a precedent uh, in itself for crypto. And I, I really like the direction that they're heading um, with their partnerships. They also have the uh, Boston Options Exchange, which is still pending approval from the SEC, but you know this gives them the type of licensure to you know really hit the ground running and what separates them from you know the other projects that exist currently. Uh, so uh, that's that's all really good, like uh, firsthand information. Uh, anyone that has a Series Seven, you can't have a Series Seven and not work for a broker dealer. So if you have a Series Seven, you work for a broker dealer, and a four hundred seven letter basically is a letter that obligates the exchange to send duplicate statements to your employer. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's more red tape. It's, it's, it's old school red tape. Uh, speaking of new school, I wanted to share this. I got this in my mailbox, as I'm assuming everybody in all of Indiana did, as Robin Hood has gone live in Indiana. And I love the fact that Indiana is not last for once at something. And it says here, <laughs> everything in one place. Stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. And that is everything as far as... Robin Hood's concerned. Oh, as far as uh, rapid adoption, absolutely. And Robin Hood, every time it rolls out, um, we see some pops. But one of the special things about Robin Hood is the community that gets wrapped around it. Each, each investment, so if you guys aren't familiar with it, you know, Robin Hood can switch back and forth, right? You don't actually hold the digital asset, but you can trade with it and then flip back to stocks. But each asset itself, um, and let me just, Maybe I can show it up on here in the screen. Yeah, their app is awesome. Uh, I Each just downloaded currency it. currency has its own chat room that's live and active during the trading. And let me tell you why that's incredibly valuable. One of the, one of the things, right, that everyone always wants to get at is get to the customer or get to the community at the moment of transaction. So there's this, you know, and you have your, like your spammers here and there, and they try to mitigate that. You can report and block people, but you get the you folks that seem to be sort of know what's going on. You have the newbies and it's, it, you can watch. There's the a lot of newbies on there. People don't know people. We, I think sometimes we, we forget that people don't know the first thing about cryptocurrency. The questions sometimes are so very basic and you want to make sure that, you know, people are being educated properly uh, and making, you know, even small investments, but they, they understand, but it's got such a magnetic attraction. Also, for those of you who don't know, uh, Robinhood just got the coveted bid license, so cryptocurrencies will be offered to New York City very soon. So, oh my God, that's huge, dude! That's massive. Get your Robinhood loaded up. 
Also, in some other good positive crypto news, um, Samsung is coming out with their new S10, and it's not rumored. There's actual pictures that they have a cryptocurrency wallet on the S10. S10 is going to ship to about 20 million people. So expect 20 million people to have cryptocurrency private key storage on their phone. And uh, that's not a rumor, but I think a rumor is that there will also be cold storage on the phone. So there will be a Trezor-like or Ledger Nano S-like device built inside of uh, Samsung S10. So all of you on Facebook uh, who are holding Siren, you know, now might be well, a good time. I to go to that too. So I hold Siren. It, had, it was down 4.5% last week. Uh, we bought it because their blockchain phone. Jason, it was mostly mostly uh, your idea. Do you is the thesis done? Should we be should we be lighting up on Siren? Well, I mean, I, you know, look, I was I, I was always I was always saying we that made money there. It was a good trade, but if Samsung's going to do it, are we going to? Is this is this over? Well, okay. So there's a couple things. First off, um, I don't know if you've looked at the design of the the Siren phone. Like, you know, it's it's a it's a great design. Like, people are loving it on that. Um, uh, what what I had said beforehand was that they were going to be having some big marketing announcement push to kind of get this out, but you know before the holidays. And once that was there, like that's that's what I was really looking to trade on, right? I wasn't trying to get it early on. I was saying, look, it's you know going to be wallowing around while they're toiling around and working on the stuff, and you know to get it in there. So around that holiday time, I was like, look, I you know I'm if if you you want to kind of decrease the position, you know it's it's fine to decrease the position. That being said, uh, Siren did end up uh, selling or taking way more orders than they had anticipated, which was a great sign on that side of it. And I don't know if they they were supposed to be launching a massive uh, Amazon campaign for them in January. Um, so I don't know exactly where that stands right now. While we're in the call, I can maybe kind of do a little bit uh, of digging on that. I think I also heard an announcement from uh, HTC. Um, you know, that they're doing a phone. I think that was a little less uh, official than the uh, Samsung announcement. But I think this has always been my uh, concern with uh, Siren Labs is they're, they're all in on, you know, a, a device. And, you know, Samsung is going to come out with uh, 20 devices by, by, before they come out with their second one. Uh, There's going to be the, and the yeah, S10, the XR and all those, you know, like, I don't want to go against Samsung. They're a South Korean company for one thing, and South Korea is is uh, black belt at cryptos. And so, if anybody can come out with relevant products, it's going to be Samsung. Uh, look at this chart. I'll show you something. See the way that like uh, three and a half cents is like resistance. It's resistance, and then breaks through and it becomes instantly becomes support for a second, right? And then uh, you know, then it failed here, and now it's resistance again. So I think that uh, I don't see a lot of I don't see a lot of reason to own this here. If it, if it trades like. 3.6 cents, I would start getting involved again. Can we take a three-month chart for a moment? Uh, there's like a spike of like bad data that kind of wrecks the chart on this screen, I'm afraid. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. Two more green shoots in the industry, which, uh, which uh, you know, I love finding green shoots. Uh, Bact, who Bact is a little bit, uh, you know, delayed in the launching of their, of their like uh, cryptocurrency acceptance platform that's going to be used by Microsoft and uh, Starbucks. Uh, but they put out job postings for like eight senior executives that can be located in either Switzerland, Hong Kong, um, or Atlanta, or New I think in some in New York City too. Um, like they put out that job, those job postings like this week. So like that's not that's not something a company does that's walking away from a project. So we're still expecting to see that come down the pipe mid February now, uh, which is going to be just massive. Once people can buy Starbucks with crypto, we've always said this: this changes the game. But we've also had a leak now that Tesla's also signed up to, to be part of the back network. So now we have for sure uh, Microsoft, Starbucks, and Tesla going. If Tesla's around, right? Uh, and the back platform. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is that every biz, every large scale business like this is just going to be their own bank, right? To a degree, they're going to be their own cash account. Like they don't need to get whacked with a merchant service charge on the back end, even if it is discounted by volume. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's going to facilitate easy spending of crypto the way you use like Apple Pay now. It's certainly going to make their balance sheet look pretty damn awesome, right? And create that a much more net cash flow. Well, let me ask this question: If as this continues to grow, um, do you think there's going to be a squeeze on uh, some of these credit card processing companies? Fuck yeah. 
Pardon so, my so I was debating this yesterday with somebody. <laughs> the only reason why Visa and Mastercard aren't like big shorts is because they're 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 fabulously uh, well informed and innovative companies. They're like going to be they're going to be big players in crypto. They're just going to morph into crypto players, I think, over time. And I'd be afraid to I'd be you know they're such cash cows. They make so much money that I well, would just uh, Mastercard has had like a series of uh, uh, pending and issued patents related to cryptocurrencies. Absolutely. I mean, th th these guys see this writing on the wall better than anybody. So they're not I bet you who sees adoption first though, um, is on the credit card side. You watch discover, right? You watch discover, go, go after it because there's a different play for validation, right? To a degree with discover. Yeah, nothing to lose. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think you're going to see companies like Stripe and Square. At Grayscale. Uh, present with us at the CFA conference in Boston. They, this week or late last week, announced a new security investment trust covering Stellar Lumens, which is awesome. Grayscale now is credited with owning 1% of all outstanding Bitcoin, even though people that buy Grayscale products on the exchanges have to pay these premiums, which, you know, we think is not always the smartest idea. It's fabulously good for the industry when people do buy their stuff because they're physically backed products. So like Grayscale goes and buys the Bitcoin, like puts it in a, in a, in a you know, cold storage. That's how they ended up owning, you know, 1% of all Bitcoin uh, outstanding. And they've launched the Stellar, Stellar Lumens Trust to go along with their other like eight uh, trusts. I don't know if anyone's watching Stellar Lumens, but all of a sudden it's the eighth largest coin with a $2 billion market cap. So, I remember laughing at Stellar Lumens and their funny logo when it came out not too long ago. Um, now they're the eighth largest coin and these guys at Grayscale continue to innovate and pioneer and they've launched a Stellar Lumens, essentially like a physically backed investment product. Yes, it tr it'll trade at a premium, but uh, for it's gonna bring money into the space and it's just a really positive thing all, all around. Is Stellar is a very interesting project to watch, um, specifically in the security token space. Um, they're, uh, they're starting to develop infrastructure for, um, I believe, issuance and, um, and trading. These are what we're considering to be investment grade coins these days. Uh, they all have market caps of north of a billion. They're not privacy tokens and uh, they trade on US exchanges. So our, let me share the different screens. Sure. So like our, out of our, our funds here. There we go. Um, what am I sharing? Oh, well, I'll stop to share. But so these are investment grade coins. I think that as uh, institutional money comes in this year, and I think that it's, you know, it's going to come in this year because we've got custody figured out. We've got clarity on, from the SEC on which fundraising practices they have problems with. So as these institutions start coming in, they're going to start coming into these big boys. So this is Unicoin Gold. And like this chart looks healthy as can be to me. And, uh, you know, we went from... 20, uh, two and a half cents to like, where are we here? 3.9 cents. Um, the market cap is still in the toilet here, just 5 million. Where, you know, not too long. And like we got increasing volume and rising prices. This is a healthy looking chart. I know we've spent in the past time diving deep on Unicorn Gold, but let's all put our feelers out to see if we can figure out like if they're winning business that we need to know about or partnerships that are, that are happening. I wish Connor was on the, on the call today, our technical analyst, but uh, I'll, I'll hit him with this after and see what he says. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, without really digging into it, um, I do know that this is one that we had, a, um, we took a position in uh, sometime last year. Uh, I think when, you know, around where there was that Supreme Court um, announcement kind of paving the way for, uh, for states to to do a little bit more online gaming and gambling, and this was one that was uh, backed by um, uh, Mark Cuban. You know, so we kind of all right, okay. They they got you know they got some support behind it, the tech guy, some money, a big name attached to the sports world. Um, so you know, I, it there could be some extra juice because of the NFL playoffs that are going on. Um, that being said. Um, uh, Satoshi, what's what's going on with um, uh, um, oh my God, I'm I'm drawing a blank. What we've been staking? Oh, with uh, with Smart Cash. Smart Cash has in fact. Uh, no, 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 no. With, uh, with Wager, well, Wager. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms in terms of price action in the chart, nothing exciting to report. But they're really rolling out uh, launching of like betting on all types of sports because when it started, it was only like football games, boxing. Now they have NBA, NHL, NFL, 
So they're, they're really adding a lot of uh, different games that you can bet on, which is great to see. At the moment, the, the way that the bets are determined if they're won or lost is still centralized. Um, it's still done in-house by, you know, the guys that started Wager, but they're working hard to soon roll out a fully decentralized version where the Oracle nodes, quote unquote, who are the ones responsible of determining winning and losing uh, bets will be, you know, fully decentralized. So they're still, you know, working to, you know, make the chain decentralized as originally uh, intended in their white paper of the ICO. But I do see a lot of progress in terms of games that they're adding, um, bets being made, you know, overall burn. So uh, it's pretty exciting stuff uh, going on at Wager. Satoshi, where do you buy Wager? What exchange are you buying this on? Um, I haven't uh, looked in quite a few months, but when I purchased it, I purchased it off of a website, Crex24, that's C-R-E-X-24. Um, at that time, they uh, weren't allowing uh, U.S. customers to buy it. I think I happened to be out of the country when I made my purchase, but now Crex24 is allowing U.S. Uh, patrons, so. Uh, cool. I pulled the chart. I, I shared it here. It looks like it's got a buyer, like a you know big buyer buying at six cents. Um, if it were to, if that buyer were to run out of desire to buy or like get his full position, I would be very very concerned. So I would have a tight stop here. Uh, but I think you can own it here with a tight stop. I think that your, you know, your downside is only like uh, two tenths of a cent. You know, to, down to like maybe 0. 0.58. I'd be interested to to see if we're going to get some bump over the next couple of weeks leading up into the Super Bowl. I think it's a great. I think it's a great idea. A nice catalyst. We're seeing in Unicorn Gold. It's clearly, uh, you know, more popular because of Cuban. Even though the market cap's only half as big, maybe, uh, maybe Unicorn Gold's the value play. But all these wager, all these like uh, gambling stocks are perhaps, you know, the right idea for February when people have got nothing to do but gamble and watch football. <laughs> well, with that, that brings us to uh, we're close to the fifty-minute mark, gents and ladies. Is yeah, anyone- token. Token 2049, it's March 13th, 14th, 15th yeah. in Hong Kong. I think we're going, Jahan. So if you want to uh, explore. Uh, yeah, man. I think it's going to be great. Uh, anybody else wants to go to Hong Kong with us in March, I think, uh, I think we want to go support Cosmo Ventures over there. They're going to be launching a new category of coin. Uh, it's really awesome. We'll talk about it on the next call. But it's like basically like these, uh, these coins are like a built-in monetary policy to basically handle some of the volatility inherent to cryptocurrency. Somebody yeah. whispered Bitcoin killer. I'm just throwing it out there. Somebody whispered it. It might, it might take some roles from Bitcoin. That's, uh, I agree. Maybe not every role, but definitely maybe, uh, maybe some important ones. Just think long-term store of value, generational wealth. Yeah, like with an endowment that's a, that, that like manages the coin's fiscal policy that's funded on the blockchain from transactions on the blockchain. And it's like, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cryptocurrency with, with fiscal policy built in. It's a really cool concept. We'll, we'll elaborate on, uh, on a call coming up. We're not supposed to talk about it because it's like pre-IPO. Well, and and one more thing I do want to bring up for our next call too. I want to talk a little, little bit more. You guys want to know where we're going to see a lot of adoption? Where people need validation, the insurance space. I got some great information on Max Gap Plus. This is a blockchain-based vehicle gap insurance. If you don't know what gap insurance is, it covers you for the difference between the, on a total uh, or a theft, the difference between you know, what your loan payment is, what the car is worth, right? So dealers are starting to slowly adopt this. If car dealers can get in behind something on, on this uh, type of technology, trust me, we're here to stay. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Insurance is perfect for a blockchain. Uh, Blake, you want to add anything, buddy? I, I know I didn't let, let you uh, talk about what's, what's new over at your shop. Um, no, not much, um, you know, on our side of things, um, you know, one project that, uh, you know, I thought was interesting that came out, um, uh, earlier this week or late last week, uh, was Grin, uh, which is an implementation of, uh, Nimble Wolf Protocol. Uh, it's kind of a blockchain without a blockchain. It's basically a set of UTXO outputs, uh, that constantly updates. Um, there's no real transaction data that's stored. Uh, you don't see amounts. Um, it, it's a, uh, it's an interesting project. Um, the, uh, the mining scheme is, um, I believe it's, uh, 80, 20 GPU shifting to 90, 10 ASIC. Um, it, it's an interesting project. 
I've heard other people talking about Grin too. I feel like our, our friends at Cosmo are talking about Grin. Yeah, um, the, the one drawback is, um, you know, it was originally proposed as a BIP, I believe. Um, and when you take that and then kind of develop your own currency, it's, it's viewed as basically from your own money um, rather than going through the, um, you know, Bitcoin uh, improvement uh, approval process. Understood. Good. We'll keep it on the radar. All right. Well, thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll talk to you soon.